NASA's administrator just dropped a bomb. Each SLS launch, over $4 billion in hardware. Gone. Destroyed. One use and it's ocean trash. Get this, that's more than what SpaceX spent building the entire Starship program from zero. After 10 years and endless budget overruns, SLS has flown once. Jared Isaacman didn't dance around it either. He flat out called it unsustainably expensive and years behind schedule. So here's my question. How long can we keep burning billions on a rocket that self-destructs after every flight while competitors are flying reusable systems? Let's break down the numbers because they're honestly staggering. The SLS core stage alone, $2.2 billion, each one. Then you've got the twin solid rocket boosters, another $800 million. Upper stage, integration, ground ops. Pile it all together and you're past $4.1 billion per launch. Every single component falls into the ocean after one flight. The RS-25 engines, the boosters, everything. NASA recovers exactly nothing. Now compare that to Starship. SpaceX's entire development program from sketches to orbital test flights cost around $3 billion over five years. The whole program. Not one launch, the entire development. The economics aren't just bad for SLS. They're completely broken. And it gets worse when you look at the timeline. SLS took over a decade from program start to first flight in 2022. A decade. During that stretch, cost overruns became the norm. Boeing, the main contractor for the core stage, kept missing deadlines and blowing past budgets. The exploration upper stage, also Boeing's baby, ran into quality control problems that even Isaacman called out publicly. When your development drags on for 10 years and your best case flight rate is once a year, the per-flight economics become catastrophic. What's the point of having a rocket you can barely afford to launch? Look at what's happening on the commercial side. SpaceX started serious Starship development in 2019. By 2023, they were doing orbital test flights. Sure, some ended in fireballs. But here's the thing. Each of those failures cost a fraction of a single SLS launch. And SpaceX learned from every one. Fast. They're not stuck in government contracting hell where every tiny design change requires years of negotiations. Heat tiles need work? They iterate in weeks. Engines need upgrades? Build new ones, test them, move on. The speed difference is night and day. Here's the fundamental problem with SLS. It was designed as an expendable rocket from day one. Those RS-25 engines powering it? They're actually modified Space Shuttle main engines, proven hardware from the 1970s. Great engines. But here's the kicker. Those shuttle engines were built to be reused. After each shuttle mission, they'd recover them, refurbish them, fly them again. With SLS, these same engines, worth about $100 million each, get used exactly once, then they're gone. NASA's literally throwing away reusable engines because the rocket can't be recovered. The irony is brutal. Starship flips that entire concept. The whole stack, Super Heavy Booster and Starship Upper Stage, designed for full reusability from scratch. Catch the booster with the tower arms, land the ship, refuel both, fly again. SpaceX has already caught boosters. They've done controlled descents with the upper stage. The pieces are coming together. If they nail their reusability targets, and recent progress says they will, 
launch costs could drop under $100 million, fully operational, versus $4 billion for SLS. That's not even competition anymore. That's one system making the other obsolete. Let's talk lunar operations, because this is where SLS economics completely collapse. NASA wants a permanent moon presence. That needs frequent flights. Not one per year, potentially dozens annually. Cargo runs with habitats, rovers, science gear. Crew rotations, supply missions with food, water, spare parts. Every single one of those on SLS costs billions. The math doesn't work. Even with optimistic budgets, running a lunar base on SLS would eat NASA's entire budget within years. Nothing left for actual science, new tech development, or Mars planning. Isaacman gets the arithmetic. When he says the current approach is taking significantly longer and costing far more than it reasonably should, that's not politics, that's math. He said sustaining lunar ops with SLS would place immense strain on budgets and infrastructure. Translation, this is economically impossible. And he's absolutely right. You can't build a sustainable space program on multi-billion dollar disposable rockets launched once a year. The numbers don't support it, period. Boeing's role here is worth examining. Quality control issues keep popping up across SLS production. That recent solid rocket booster test Isaacman mentioned ended with a malfunction. Not catastrophic, but concerning enough to investigate. The exploration upper stage keeps facing delays. These aren't just technical hiccups, they're cost multipliers. Every delay adds months and millions. Every quality issue means more inspections, more testing, more validation. In the commercial world, these inefficiencies would force restructuring or bankruptcy. But SLS runs on cost plus contracts. Overruns get absorbed by taxpayers, not contractors. Meanwhile, SpaceX works on fixed price contracts. Development goes over budget? <sighs> SpaceX eats it. That creates serious incentives for efficiency and speed. They can't afford decade-long development cycles or lingering quality problems. The contract structure drives performance in ways government contracting doesn't. Isaacman flew on Dragon himself. He knows this difference firsthand. His push to make NASA an orchestrator, not a builder, comes from understanding what works. Let companies that excel at cost-effective execution build the hardware. Think about fleet utilization for a second. SpaceX envisions Starship boosters and ships flying dozens of times each. Build 10 boosters and 10 ships. That's potential for hundreds of flights. The capital investment gets spread across many missions. With SLS, every vehicle is single use. Build 10 SLS rockets, get exactly 10 flights. Done. Capital costs never get amortized. You're perpetually buying new hardware. It's like buying a new car for every single trip and scrapping it when you arrive. One approach builds sustainable capability. The other just burns money. This economic reality explains why everyone's chasing reusability. Blue Origin's new Glenn booster? Designed for recovery and reuse. Rocket Lab's Neutron? Reusable. Stoke Space? Building fully reusable from the ground up. The entire industry has reached the same conclusion. Expendable rockets are economic dead ends, except for niche cases. Even China's developing reusable programs. Global consensus. Reusability is the future. SLS is the past. Isaacman's public statements matter because of timing. He's not some political appointee lobbing abstract criticism. He's NASA's administrator. His job includes defending the agency's programs. 
yet he's openly saying SLS costs too much, takes too long, can't sustain the mission tempo Artemis needs long term. These admissions carry weight because they come from someone with every institutional reason to defend the status quo. When the person running NASA says the flagship program isn't economically viable, people listen. Markets listen. Politicians listen. The commercial alternative is already here. Starship HLS won the Artemis III lunar landing contract. Dragon could handle crew transport cheaper than Orion. Starship's cargo capacity, over 100 tons to LEO, doubles SLS or better depending on the mission. Blue Origin's lander adds backup and competition. Smaller companies could handle comm satellites, rover deployment, support roles. The ecosystem exists. Capabilities are maturing. The cost structure is fundamentally superior. The question isn't whether commercial providers can replace SLS. The question is, why keep paying for SLS when better options already exist? Economic reality always wins. Isaacman's admissions confirm what the numbers have been screaming for years. SLS burns billions per flight, while competitors build reusable systems for less. The commercial ecosystem isn't just cheaper, it's already proving it works. NASA's future is in backing innovation, not defending legacy hardware that can't sustain lunar ambitions. If this breakdown was valuable, smash that like button and subscribe to New Space Review for honest space industry analysis. Drop your thoughts below. Can SLS survive? Or is cancellation inevitable? And check out the video on your screen about why Starship's bringing back landing legs and the drone ship plan. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.